Now it's time to actually introduce the concept of making adjustments to any given model. And so the model that we have right here is to create an article and it only has two fields. So it's very common during development and later in production that you might need to change or add fields, right? So in the case of title, this is just way too big of a field that we probably want to change it. Now, part of your intuition might be like, oh, well, this is just a model form. And so I should just change the fields in the model form itself in forms.py. And actually you could do that. You could actually use very similar things that we did with forms.form inside of a model form as well. But that's actually not what we wanna do. Model forms are nice for automatically generating a form from a model. But what we actually want to do here is actually change the model itself, change the fields that are in here. So we're going to start off with the title field. And of course, using a text field means that we can pretty much put a ton of text in here and we want it to be limited. If you think about it, most titles have a certain number of characters. So what that means is we're going to actually come in here and use a character field, which is actually just char. They just shortened it to char field. And if we save that and we try to run make migrations like we did when we first made this model and hit enter, I get this error, right? Um, so these errors are incredibly common for these fields because they are pretty strict as to what the field is and how it like ties into the database. So what does this actually mean for us? Well, whenever you're wanting to add new fields in, you're going to want to go to the model field types documentation, um, which is, you know, it's at this link here. But if you just searched uh, on Google or any search engine, Django model field types like that, you should be able to come up with this reference here. And so the reference is going to show us all of the different kind of field options we have at this time you know, with this current version, right? So I'm using 3.2, but maybe later versions will have other field types. And so if we scroll down to the character field or the char field, um, what we see in here is this argument right here, right? Some fields don't have a named argument in there. The ones that do have a named argument are typically required. And of course, if you read the documentation, it also will tell you that. So in this case, what we have here is a max underscore length that's required. So really, like I mentioned about the title, we might only want it to be a certain length of characters. And so this is where we can put that in. So let's say, for instance, we wanted it to be 220 characters at most. That's actually a pretty big title in of itself, right? So, you know, maybe you only want 70 characters. This is something you can play around with um, with what your the demands of your project are. Typically on my end, I use a max length of 120. So we save that and now we try to run make migrations. Now you may have forgot, but remember that make migrations itself is like telling Django, hey, prepare for a database change. So I hit enter. This time it actually worked. I didn't get an error. And I can actually look in my migrations folder to see what is going to happen in the database, right? So Django is gonna tell the database, hey, let's alter this field and we're gonna change it to having it being a character field with a max length of 120. So it's gonna be a lot more of a rigid character itself or a rigid um, like data type itself. We can't usually go over whatever that length is gonna be. So now that we've ran make migrations, we're gonna go ahead and run python manage.py migrate and we hit enter. This will make all of those changes in the database. Now, if you remember when we went into production, this is actually a job that happens in production because we don't wanna accidentally miss these migrations. I'll talk about that again once we go back into production. Um, but for now, what we have is a new model, basically. So this is new in the sense that we have a different title. Of course, I could have renamed this something else, right? So I could have said name in here and done that change as well. In fact, I could have done them both together. Um, so when I actually run this, I get a new error, and this is actually related to the form itself, right? So whenever we make drastic field name titles, we have to make sure that places that reference those field names know about those, those name title changes. Um, so I'm actually not gonna do that right now because it's not really worth it. Um, so 
we did a change to any given field. Now let's go ahead and introduce, we're gonna add a field and then remove a field. So I'm gonna go ahead and add something called timestamp. We're gonna go ahead and do models.datetime field. And this actually takes in two arguments, auto now and auto now add. Now these arguments can be either or or both of them. Okay, so to understand this, auto now is like whenever the model is saved, this is gonna be set. Whenever the model is added, this is gonna be set. So a timestamp makes sense for when it's added. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of these. So auto now add is for when it's added. And then if we wanted to just say, you know, last save or last updated, usually I put this in as updated. This is gonna be auto now true. So you've never seen these before probably. So let's go ahead and save the models. Since we made changes to the models, we have to do two commands. We have to run python manage.py, make migrations, hit enter, and it's gonna give me this, right? So this is happening because we did not specify a default. Now, this is actually not incredibly surprising, and I'll see why in just a second. And so now if we think of this model, like this model right here, as this table in a spreadsheet, right? The spreadsheet program doesn't matter in this case. Um, but the idea is we have data in the database or so Django thinks, right? Because we already made the ID and title. So even if none of these existed, Django thinks that we already have those in the database. So if we look at a database like this and we're like, okay, now I need two new columns. I have a timestamp and I have updated. Okay, so I just added these two columns. What do I do with these rows here? And of course, this could be 10 million rows, but the idea is what do these values need to be? Because by default, it's not just gonna be blank or empty or null um, because, well, we didn't allow that to be the case. So when it comes to something like this, um, we are gonna be specifying whether or not it can be empty, whether or not it can even save values like this. And so luckily for us, Django and databases give us really nice, easy ways to just move into this, right? To be able to actually set either the default value, as in what are these gonna be, or to quit and allow to set a default value on my own or allow it to be blank. Now, in this case, it's basically saying, hey, you need to either set a default in models or update all existing rows. So in the case of timestamp and updated, these kinds of fields, what I end up doing is I provide a one-off default and I just simply use timezone.now. And this is provided to us in the shell right here. And I'll show you how to do this inside of our model as well. It's really simple. Uh, but the idea is this is actually available to us. We can hit timezone.now, hit enter. That's what the default is anyway. And if we look at the migration itself, it actually gives you what's happening with that timestamp field right here, right? So it's saying, hey, there's a date time field here. And it actually writes this default in. So this default only occurs to all of the pre-existing values in this case, when I provided that quote unquote one-off default. So I'm gonna just pretend that date time is gonna be just simply A, right? So if I actually copy this, uh, what's gonna happen is it's gonna put it in here just like that. Updated is a little bit different on, on that actual phrase, but then going forward, now it's gonna be whatever the timestamp would be related to that actual time. And these will all be different going forward. Um, so the timestamps previous to adding that field will not be different. And so the updated field is slightly different because it's gonna go off of when it was last updated. So when you actually last saved something. So let's go ahead and actually take a look at this um, in the actual Django admin itself. So first off in the admin, what I wanna do is on the list display here, I'm gonna go ahead and add a timestamp that actual field, and then also the updated field. Okay, so we saved those two things, made those changes. Let's go ahead and take a look at our admin, and we'll go ahead and jump in just like this. Oh, let's make sure this server is running. 
python manage.py run server. And I've got this other error. You have unimplied migrations. This is good. So it's telling me I need to run migrate because all I did actually was make migrate. And then we diverted, talked about what was happening. So let me close out that server again and run python manage.py migrate. Uh, that is a warning you definitely should heed. <laughs> the, like when you're not migrating, that means your database and your Django project are out of sync and errors could certainly occur. And that would also happen if you ran the test too, you'd see that same error. Um, anyway, so now back into the admin. If I refresh in here, um, I see that it says my user, my user. Okay, so let's actually jump into articles here. And now I should see these timestamps showing up. Uh, so these timestamps are not surprisingly showing right now uh, based off of the time zone I put in my Django project. So for me, it's not actually 8 p.m. Um, it's actually closer to 5 p.m. But the idea here is we've got the two timestamps in here and it's kind of like what I was saying with the actual spreadsheet is they're all like A, 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 B, C. So let's go ahead and just add a new field, okay? So inside of create here, I can re-render this. Notice that the title field's length has changed. So I'll go ahead and say another new title and some data and hit create article. Now, if I go back into the admin and refresh in here, it now is giving me a new timestamp because I just created that and a new updated. They're the exact same thing because I just added it into the database. So the field's gonna be the same. But if I actually select another field, let's say like hello world and say another try, well, this is cool, exclamation mark, and hit just simply save. What I'll see if I sort it by updated, I'll see the last two things that were updated, right? So the timestamp didn't change for that one I just updated, just that updated field. And this is actually why I end up using these fields all the time is so I can sort of track changes that have happened to them in terms of saving and adding to my database. Uh, so it's actually a very common thing to end up doing, which I think is actually really cool. And so that's kind of the gist of adding fields, changing them. But what if you actually wanted to use another time field? What if you wanted to give your own date, for example? So let's say, for instance, we wanted something like publish. We can come in here and do models.date field. Now, a date field just doesn't have the time object associated, just the calendar date. That's it. Now, we can actually use these two arguments in here now. This time, it's going to be false for both of them. So auto now add and false for both. Okay, so we save that. What do we have to do whenever we make changes to the models? We run python manage.py make migrations. Again, it's gonna ask me for either the one-off default or to let me add a default. So I'm gonna go ahead and say two this time. And now what I'm gonna do is use that time zone again. So I'm gonna go ahead and import from django.utils. We're gonna import the time zone package and we're gonna go ahead and set a default here. So I'll say default equals to time zone dot now. Okay, so let's try it again and we'll run make migrations. This time it seems like it worked and then I'll go ahead and run python manage.py migrate. We hit enter and what do you know? It seems like everything's looking good. So let's go ahead and run the server. Okay, now of course the default I could have just used as a one-off, right? And I still can, but we'll come back to it. Um, so let's go back in here into the database now. And now if I actually click on any given field in here, what I see is the title, the content, and publish. Notice that timestamp and updated are not showing up at all. Um, so the reason for that is because we just never added it into the actual backend. We never allowed the admin to even show it. Right, so, so that's getting outside the context of what we need to worry about. Um, but at this point, we see that there is a published date here. But you're probably wondering, well, what if I don't want a published date and I hit save, you know, what happens? It says this field is required. Um, so this brings us to the next part of things where if we looked back at that spreadsheet, you know, maybe I want my published date for all of these to just be empty, to have no value whatsoever. So what you do with that is we can actually get rid of this default now or leave it, it's up to you. We can say null equals to true and blank equals to true. So null means in the database, it can be an empty value. 
Blank means that on our Django forms and our Django admin, it can be an empty value. Now, if you don't have blank equals to true, then it can still be an empty value, but Django is gonna be like, hey, you need to put something in here. So let's start with that. I made some changes to models.py. I'm gonna close out this server. I'm gonna run python manage.py, make migrations, and then python manage.py migrate. Okay, so I, I made those changes. It can now be empty in the database. So let's go ahead and run the server again. Press up a few times. And let's go back into the admin, refresh in here, hit continue, still saying this field is required. Okay, um, and that is of course, because I didn't say blank equals to true. We save that now and we run our make migrations and our migrate and then run that server again. This time I should be able to just save that data without having a published date. Now the older ones, every other value that ever existed in the database prior does still have that published date because if we go back to our migrations when we added that published date at all, um, or let's go back up one more, when we added this field, it had a default. So when we ran migrate on this one, it actually added that data into the database. So now, how do we delete a field? Okay, so we've added fields, we've you know updated fields, we've done all that. How do we actually delete one? Well, I can comment this out, save it. I made changes to models.py. So what do we need to do? We need to run Python, manage.py, make migrations. And then before I even migrate it, I'm gonna look in here and notice that it says at the very last migration at 0009, it says that it's gonna remove this field. So when you remove a field like this, it's actually going to delete this data in the database. So after we run make migrations, we're gonna run migrate, and then we'll go ahead and run that server again. And we'll come in here, refresh. Notice that that field is gone now. This particular object actually did have data in that field. So let's go ahead and bring the field back and run those migrations again. We'll close out the server run make migrations, and then run migrate. Something to note is it didn't say we need to set a default value because of this, right? It didn't give us one of those errors from a while ago that we ended up setting default values on. And if we look at the migration for that, we can see that there is no default value because mainly, not because of blank, but mainly because of null, because we can leave it empty in the database or leave it empty just like we had in the spreadsheet here. So now if I refresh into this um, admin, oops, we need to make sure that's running. Let's go ahead and do that. Now if we refresh in here, that data is gone. It's gone forever. There's no way to recover that data. And so the only way we could have recovered that data if we made a backup before we removed the field itself. But this is something you're gonna play around with a lot while you're developing things. And for an article, all three of these make sense to me. Perhaps your article, you wanna have a actual date time. So it's like very specific to when you actually publish it, the actual time itself. Um, but that's not always required, which we'll get into later. Uh, but for now, we actually have been able to add some fields. Now, something I'm gonna leave us with is this idea of a slug field. So if you look at slug field in here, this is something we want to learn about because there's still another augmentation that we can do to the model that just makes it a little bit more robust as well.